Hello, I'm James Clark from King's College London, and in this short video I'm going to show you the steps required to undertake a two-way ANOVA analysis in GraphPad Prism. You would use a two-way ANOVA rather than a one-way ANOVA when you have one measurement variable and two nominal variables, and that each value of the nominal variable is found in combination with each value of the other nominal variable. An example of this is on the screen. We have two different cell types, wild type in group A, and our GPP-5 genetically modified cell line in group B, and we expose them to a drug over a period of time. So in this case, the measurement variable is their viability, and the nominal variables are genotype and time. This tests three null hypotheses. It tests that the mean of the measurement variable are equal for different values of the first nominal variable, in this case our genetic uh, cell type, and that the means are equal for different values of the second nominal variable. In other words, the means are the same over time. It also tests that there is no interaction. The effects of one nominal variable don't depend on the value of the other nominal variable. This is a very common test undertaken in research labs where you want to see the effect of a drug or a treatment over time or at different doses between two different cell lines or, or other biological entities. In order to carry out a two-way ANOVA and PRISM, you need to make sure that your table is formatted as a group table. You can do this when you start a new file in PRISM, but to show you the settings used in this file, we can click on the Table Format button. In this case, our table is grouped, and we have chosen to enter five replicate values in side-by-side sub-columns because we have carried out this experiment five times in five independent experiments, and therefore our n is five. We can plot these graphs, in fact PRISM plots them automatically for us in the Graphs tab of the Navigation panel, and we can see here the graph are plotted here. Looking at the graph objectively, one might show that the genetically modified cell line has a bigger response at one and two hours compared to the wild-type cells. Therefore we would test this using a two-way ANOVA. You can carry out a two-way ANOVA by three different means. Either clicking on the Analyze button in the menu bar, choosing New Analysis from the Results panel of the Navigation pane, or by choosing Insert New Analysis from the menu. In this case, we will click on Analyze on the menu bar. When you click on the Analyze button, the Analyze data window appears on the screen. Since we have a grouped table, PRISM automatically chooses the grouped analyses options. You can see them here. We have a choice between two-way and three-way ANOVA. We can either look at row means or do multiple t-tests. Since we want to undertake a two-way ANOVA, and that would be the suitable test for these data, we choose two-way ANOVA, and we choose our two data sets from the Analyze Which Datasets box on the right-hand side. If you had undertaken more experiments with more groups but do not wish to include them in your analyses, you can discount them here. We then press OK. We now have the Parameters window. The Parameters window is divided into six different tabs. The first two tabs are dedicated to the Repeated Measures Design option. The study that we have carried out here is not a Repeated Measures. The cells used at baseline are different from the cells measured at one hour and the cells measured at two hours. But if this was a biological entity that could be measured over the three different time periods to give us our measurement variable, we could choose a repeated measures analysis, as long as our data are organized correctly. For instance, Y1 would need to include the information from only one N. In other words, the 34, 23 and 28 result on the screen were taken from the same biological entity. Y2, Y3, Y4 and Y5 would contain the information from the second, third, fourth and fifth entity. If the data are not entered in this way, your repeated measures analysis will not work correctly. 
If you have chosen repeated measures, you have a choice as to how your data are matched. Either each column represents a different time point, so match values are spread across the row, or each row represents a different time point, so match values are stacked into a subcolumn, or both are true. Prism gives you a handy graphical hint on the top of the data arrangement window just to give you an idea of what you're dealing with. In most studies that we might undertake, you might use data in this format, where each of the Y columns represents a different time point measured in the same entity. However, as I said in this case, we are not using repeated measures. The second repeated measures analysis window gives you the options of which of the analysis methods you wish to choose. Either a standard repeated measures ANOVA, a mixed effects model which allows you to use missing values, or allow PRISM to decide which one to do. However, this is not a repeated measure study, so I'll deselect the repeated measures option. The third panel is to do with the names of the factors that you are using. PRISM asks you to enter the column and row factor. Whilst this is optional, it's handy to enter what the columns and rows represent because it will give you a better understanding of the outcome of your statistical tests once this has been completed. We then go to multiple comparisons and this is where the post hoc tests are defined. By default, there are no multiple comparisons set up. Using the drop-down box, you can select which multiple comparison test to undertake. Again, PRISM will give you a handy hint in the graphical presentation underneath the selection box, so when you choose an option, PRISM will show you what it is comparing. In this case, it is only comparing the rows. Therefore, it does not take into account the different columns. In the second option, it takes into account each of the treatments and compares rows within each treatment. The third option compares individual rows with the individual columns. So for example, in this case, you'll be comparing the response at baseline between one cell line and the other, but you would not be comparing the results at baseline with the treated results with the second genotype. The fourth option, and most likely the most common option chosen, is the compare all cell means regardless of rows and columns. This is a complex multi-comparison ANOVA post hoc test, and it'll give you a p-value for the post hoc test carried out between every row and every column. Not all of these analyses might be suitable for your study design, but it is quite a good place to start. Once you've chosen your multiple comparisons, you must choose the post hoc test to be carried out. This is found in the Options pane. In the top of this window, you choose which multiple comparisons test to be carried out. PRISM will recommend a test for you, in this case, Tukey, but you also have the option between Bonferroni, Sidak, Holm Sidak, and Newman Cools. Since Tukey are recommended here, I will click on Tukey. We also have options for multiple comparisons with false discovery rate or not to correct for multiple comparisons. Below there are some other options which you may want to take some time to read through. One nice option is the production of some narrative results. We'll select that and we'll see the outcome shortly. Finally, you can choose whether you want to create some graphs showing your residuals. However, we are happy with the choices we have made and we're going to click on the OK button. Straight away, the results of your two-way ANOVA will appear under the results section of your navigation panel. At first, this results panel might look a little bit daunting. You have three tabs to choose from. The ANOVA results, the multiple comparison results, and since we selected narrative results, a narrative results window also appears. On the first page of ANOVA results, you will see the results of the two-way ordinary ANOVA. The alpha level is set to 0 
giving us a 95% confidence. The source of variation is described as an interaction between time and genotype, or time or genotype dependent. In this case, you can see actually the p-value is very low, showing that there is certainly both a time and genotype variation. Underneath there, you will see your degrees of freedom and ANOVA table with f-values plotted, and under that you'll see the means and a summary of data, including n numbers and number of values. The data you're really interested in, having carried out this experiment, are the multiple comparisons. Since we chose to compare every column and every row with every other column and row, this table is somewhat complicated for the current study. If we look at all the data on a single page, we can see that it is comparing baseline wild type with baseline GPP-5s, but also baseline wild type with the one hour wild type, one hour GPP-5, two hour wild type, etc. This is a complicated analysis, and each line reports the mean difference, the 95% confidence difference, whether it thinks it is significant, in other words, whether the alpha of 0.05 has been met, it then gives you a summary whether it believes these data are significantly different or not, and then an adjusted p-value, giving you the indication of the outcome of these post-hoc tests. By looking down this list, you can see that a number of comparisons show significant differences between the means of each of these groups. If you had chosen different options in your multiple post-hoc comparisons, and remember, you can do this by clicking on this button here, which allows you to change the analysis parameters. Your table will look different depending on the options you selected. Beyond the multiple comparisons window are your narrative results. The narrative results give you the answer you're looking for in plain English. For instance, does genotype have the same effect on all values of time? Because we entered the word genotype and time into our column and row names, it gives us the answer in plain English. Of course, these observations are just the results of the mathematical statistical test. You will need to determine whether the results posted here are relevant to your model based on your hypothesis. So that's how you carry out a two-way ANOVA with multiple comparisons. PRISM guides you through the process and at the end will produce a narrative page which will help you decide what the outcome of your experiment is.